do my I'm going to do the music on my laptop here. I'm just going to turn it all off. So a couple of them I don't want you guys to see the songs that I'm playing for it. So if you can hear it after the first one, let me know. Okay. So for my project, I did music and and Bridget. Music and wait, music and shopping. The um, reason why I chose this project, originally I started out with something different, but then I was thinking back, um, when I was in high school, I remember I was in, in art class with someone we were listening to the radio, and this song came on. You guys hear it? Yeah. Um, it's Walking on Sunshine. Um, and one girl in my class actually worked at BJ's Wholesale Food, and she said, oh, this is a song they always play in BJ's. And said, what do you mean? And she said they always play that song in BJ's because it makes people feel really good, and they're walking around buying all these like wholesale items. They're like, oh, I'll get this, I'll get this. Um, so I kind of thought back to that, and it intrigued me, and I wanted to know, like, do stores really play music that makes you feel good like that? I never noticed that they played this song, and I bought more when I walked into BJ's. So that's why I picked this project.
So survey on overall effects. Um, a survey was conducted that um, talked about the effect on consumer shopping experience um, in regards to music. Overall, it surveyed 1,000 British shoppers on their attitude towards in-store music, and it took note of their psychological and emotional responses. The results of this um, survey were that a half of shoppers have left a store for hearing annoying music. 23% of customers would be less likely to return to a store if they didn't like the music they heard. And 49% of shoppers said they stayed longer in stores because they liked the music. And um, a media, that's a, a company that plays music, their scientific advisor um, stated that there's been such negative customer feedback and lower sales and fewer customer referrals based on some music that's chosen in stores. So it, there is a strong correlation. Some customers do notice it without being told. Um, Music is the single most effective way to grab a hold of the shopper's um, attention. That was stated by a media place, again, a company that I told you, develops mu music strategies for retailers. There are companies that actually do that. <coughs> I'll talk about that later. But he said it's the single most effective way to grab a hold of the shopper's attention. So when you're walking into a store, it's the first thing you'll notice. If you're going to walk into Forever 21 and it's dead silent, something's going to seem a little off, the same with Hollister. It's something that they're known for their music. It's also linked um, from everything to improving staff morale, to enhancing a shop customer shopping experience, to crucially increasing sales. So the cost of all this. You probably never thought that new music actually had a cost to it. Music adds value to a business, and everything costs money, value costs money. So um, you have to pay money on music that's played in your business. And since a uh, store is a public venue, it's considered a public performance when you hear music playing. So you obviously have to pay for a concert when you go to a concert, so it's almost like you have to pay to listen to music when you walk inside. Um, this fee is called a royalty fee for businesses, and it must be paid yearly by businesses to the ASCAP, which is the American Society of Composers and Authors, or um, the BMI, Broadcast Music Incorporated. Um, certain companies are in charge, like Regard Sound, I'll talk about that later, they're in charge of collecting this fee and giving it to the um, composers. The cost depends on the business <laughs> square footage, and it can range anywhere from $200 to $2,000, depending on how big the business is. And the money collected is given as compensation to composers and songwriters each time a song is played. Um, in 2010, many restaurants and coffee shops in Calgary, Canada, um, received an unexpected bill um, from a company called Regard Sound. It's a Toronto-based licensing company. They sent out bills to assist musicians in receiving the proper compensation for their um, music being played in public settings. Uh, copyright law, as I stated, requires you to pay a royalty fee, and some coffee shops were just opening and just playing music and didn't think anything about it. So a lot of businesses threw um, the bill aside. One company that, one uh, business that threw aside was Granica Coffee Shop. As you can see here, it's really small. It's a seven-seat coffee shop, and it played Icelandic folk music, which I'm going to play in one second for you guys. And they received the bill, and they weren't really sure what to do with it. This is Icelandic folk music. Probably not looks like on your iPod or your iPhone. So, um, despite the seven seat um, coffee shop size and popularity of music, <coughs> you still were required to pay the fee. And it was this lawsuit battle and everything like that. And at the end of the fight, they didn't have to end up paying the fee because they were playing music in the kitchen, um, not actually on the seven seat sales floor. So, that whole thing got um, disputed, but it was actually a new story that they were um, billed for it. Um, but now with the digital age increasing in popularity every day, um, satellite radio has become a new way for um, alternative, a new alternative for retailers to use. So they probably should have thought about this before they started playing music. Um, Sirius XM is a cost-effective method for stores to play the radio. Because um, radio stations such as Sirius XM, they play a blanket um, cover fee to all composers. So you only have to pay a small fee to um, Sirius XM, and then they just pay everyone. So it's a good way to avoid the public performance fee. <clears throat> Music licensing fees are proving to be too much for some businesses in the economy nowadays. In 2010, the Dollar Tree decided to pull Play Music from all of its 3,899 sales floors. The spokesperson for the company said that the decision was made to be as cost effective as possible. They did researches on successful places like Target. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed Target doesn't play music on their sales floors. Um, and they said that those businesses were still able to have a um, friendly atmosphere about playing music, and they're still able to make money. <coughs> um, the actual amount that Dollar Tree was saving in licensing fees was never released, but um, a representative from Music, who is another licensing company, said that there's such a large chain that they probably could have saved a lot, money, 
a lot of money, but they never released the actual dollar amount. Um, some customers started a Facebook page in regards to this. There's only eight people that liked it at the time, but it was still in a new story. And they said the statement, we will not shop at Dollar Tree unless they bring the music back. So I don't know if you ever run into Dollar Tree and notice that they don't play music, but some customers said they were really angry about it. <laughs> How music is chosen. This is the fun part. Um, it's a huge decision. It's the most strategic component in the business model. More comfortable, more comfortable you are in a shopping experience, the more likely you are to buy. So many times marketing teams come up with um, the actual music that's chosen, but there are companies <coughs> such as Music and Play Network that come up with playlists for companies, which is a super cool job. You um, go in and you go into their business setting and you get the feel for the company and everything. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute with Under Armour. But um, it depends on their whole mission statement. Um, one business said their mission, their vision for customers is to engage them in the discovery of the world, to make them look up and pay attention to what they're watching, <coughs> what they're seeing. Um, every business has its target audiences. For example, I don't know if you guys know Hollister, um, they play the really loud music. Does anybody know why they play really loud music? Okay. Um, they have two goals with this. They play um, loud music because it creates a cool environment for um, preteens. They're going into stores. They're trying to fit in. So it's a cool environment for the teenagers as they're walking in. Second, um, loud music, parents don't want to enter a loud store. So kids think it's like their safe haven walking in. Their parents don't want to be in there, so they're rebellious. So that's why they play the loud music as well. There's um, such thing as, as music stylists. Um, one um, man that I researched, his name is Peter Rouse. He's a self-proclaimed music stylist, and he actually does music um, compositions for restaurants. So he gets to go to restaurants all around the world and eat there and get the feeling for what um, what kind of music they would like. Under Armour. Um, At Play Network makes playlists for Under Armour, Converse, Old Navy, FedEx, SeaTac, Airport, and Finish Line. Um, Spencer Manio is the guy who did the playlist for Under Armour. He said the, um, the music in Under Armour wasn't matching their brand anymore, so he had, he was hired to go in and make a new playlist for the stores. Um, I don't know if you everybody knows Under Armour, the crunchy, like muscle fitting shirts and everything. Um, so he went to their headquarters in Baltimore, and he worked out in their gyms, and he went to all the laboratories and everything, and he noticed it was like a machine, however it was working out. So the word that he came up with was creative. Um, he could just picture everyone like working like a machine. So for music, he's, he thought of familiar clap along sing along songs. Said today we're in a serious gear, just like a machine. So although he couldn't release the actual playlist that he came up with, here's a little bit of what it sounds like. It's supposed to pump you up to work out, so you're gonna like buy expensive clothes. It's something that you hear in a boot camp experience or a CrossFit experience. Um, so I'm sure you can kind of imagine walking into Under Armour and hearing that upbeat music. Um, a lot of uh, Skrillex would be played, he said. It's supposed to be a human machine, so I'm sure you can picture yourself walking in Under Armour. <clears throat> fit. Um, I talked about fit in the beginning, um, the ability for music to fit the experience. So a study was actually conducted by a whole lot of people, I'm not going to name them here, but it was on the Journal of Business Research. And they, they talked to customers as they were leaving stories about what they expected the music to be like. So one customer was walking in a Nike, as you'll see in the background, and she knows um, that Nike is a sports apparel store, so she expected it to be upbeat. She didn't expect to be hearing jazz or classical music. When she walked in, she heard the upbeat music, so it correctly fit her shopping experience. In contrast, um, to a widely known store like Nike, another customer walked into a small country store called Country Road. And I mean, I'm sure you can picture like a mom and pop store on the side of the road that you go into and there's like little trinkets and everything like that. Um, and she pictured relaxation music and she heard it. She was really relaxed. She felt like she was at home. So she was more likely to linger around. She said if she heard upbeat music like was played in Nike, she wouldn't have felt as comfortable to shop around. So. Because the customer felt at home, she had a very positive, pleasant shopping experience. So you can see how much they really connect. If you walked to the mom and pop store on the side of the road and you heard that Skrillex music, it wouldn't fit and you would just want to get out of there. So that's about fit. Perception of time. Um, a study by Yelp and Sponberg said 55% of people will make a purchase when music is played and 47% will make a purchase when no music is played. If you'll notice that the um, statistic is very 
very similar. There's not a huge difference in it, but I'm gonna explain that in a minute. Um, there's a difference between impulse shoppers. Okay. There's a difference between impulse shoppers and non-impulse shoppers. Um, younger shoppers feel they shop longer when listening to background music, and older people feel like they shop longer when listening to foreground music. Um, background music is like quiet in the background. So younger shoppers, when they're not listening to super loud music, they feel like they're in there for a super long time. Waiting in line, if you hear fast music, you feel like you're waiting for a shorter amount of time. The same thing with um, being on hold on a telephone call. Genre, volume, and tempo. Um, genre, the type of music you hear in a grocery store is not gonna be the same type of music that you hear in a teen clothing store. There's lots of different things, like if you go to a wine store and you hear French music, you're more likely to buy French wine. There's lots of different correlations that I'm not gonna go into. Um, tempo <coughs> causes shoppers to move slower, um, but it doesn't always influence this low money that you spend. So you might be walking slower, but it doesn't mean you're gonna buy more. And at restaurants, um, it causes people to take their time and order more food and drinks if there's a slower tempo. And finally, music, mood, and experience. Um, mood influence, music influences your mood and mood influences your experience of something. Impulse shoppers rely on their mood to whatever they're doing. So if you're an impulse shopper, you're, if you're happy, you're gonna buy more. If you're not an impulse shopper, it doesn't matter what the music is. So the trick is to balance um, music playlists to rightfully target impulse shoppers, but to not annoy thoughtful shoppers. And putting it all together, I'm sure you guys just got a lot of information. It totally depends on the business and what you're trying to achieve. You can't play the same type of music playlist in a teen clothing store, a, a restaurant, and a grocery store. You have to know what your goal is and you have to know what you want your customers to buy. In a review, we went shopping, talked about the effects and the cost, how music is um, picked, the fit, perception of time, all those different things, and how it all comes together. So hopefully you guys enjoyed your shopping experience today. And you'll think more when you walk into a mall.